Ah, science, the noble pursuit of knowledge for the betterment of humanity. Curing diseases, launching rockets, inventing Wi-Fi. But occasionally, some folks get a little too curious. So curious that they end up doing, well, unspeakably evil things, all in the name of, you guessed it, Yes, science! So buckle up, because today we're diving headfirst into some of the most diabolical experiments ever conducted. Spoiler alert, you're going to lose a little faith in humanity. First up, let's chat about the Romans. Ah, yes, the OG pioneers of civilization, engineering marvels, and apparently, the art of causing excruciating pain. We all know the Romans were obsessed with anatomy. And to learn anatomy, they needed bodies, flesh and bones, including that part. Back in ancient Rome, curious minds weren't satisfied with dissecting dead bodies to learn about anatomy. Oh no, that would have been too easy. They wanted their subjects alive. Yep, heard that right. This little gem of a practice was called vivisection, and it involved cutting open living prisoners, often slaves or criminals, to study their organs while they were still functioning. I mean, what better way to understand the human heart than by watching it beat as the person screams for mercy. Miserere mai. It's like med school, but with more screaming and fewer diplomas. And then one fine day, some genius in the Senate probably said, Hey Marcus, why don't we make this a public thing? You know, for the kids. So they did it in the open, right in the middle of town, like some twisted gladiator match. Yep, they did it in public for everyone to see. Like, hey, bring the kids, honey. It's Saturday. We're going to watch someone's liver get removed. Hey, imagine kids munching on snacks and someone yelling, Cool, cut that part again. Yummy. Who needs Netflix when you've got live anatomical horror shows in the middle of town? Right? Now, if you thought the Romans were bad, let me introduce you to Unit 731, the literal embodiment of <laughs> But with no one to actually stop them. This wasn't just some small underground operation. Oh no. This was a full-on government-sponsored nightmare. Operating in Japan during World War II, Unit 731 was led by the charmingly monstrous Shiro Ishii, a man who probably looked at the Hippocratic Oath and said, Nani, soar. What's that? They called their human subjects Maruta, which translates to logs. You've got frostbite experiments where subjects were forced to stand outside in sub-zero temperatures until their limbs turned into icicles. Then, bam! they'd be dunked into boiling water just to see how fast they'd thaw out. Sugoine, amazing, right? And it didn't stop there. They unleashed plague-infested fleas into the population, weaponized cholera, and even tested flamethrowers on live prisoners because why not add a little barbecue to your horror show? It's like they woke up every morning and said, Kyo wa nani o koroshimasu ka? What shall we kill today? But here's the kicker. After all the unspeakable horror, many of these mad scientists were given immunity in exchange for their research. Yep, instead of trials, they got golden tickets to continue their careers. Because nothing says justice quite like handing out job promotions to war criminals. Unit 7 and 31 wasn't just a dark chapter in history. It was the whole damn horror novel. Proof that sometimes the pursuit of knowledge goes straight past Eureka and into... <laughs> Try being part of an experiment where they literally freeze your limbs just to study the effects of frostbite. Oh, and by study, I mean watch you suffer in real time. Science. Am I right? All right, buckle up, because next we're hopping over to the land of life, liberty, and the pursuit of what the heck, man? The United States, where they decided to turn medical ethics into a bad punchline with the Tuskegee syphilis study. So picture this. It's 1932 in Macon County, Alabama, and a group of over 600 black men, sharecroppers mostly, are promised free health care by the U.S. Public Health Service. Sounds good, right? Who wouldn't want to get their blood pressure checked and maybe some free meds? But oh no, this wasn't some wholesome neighborhood clinic situation. It was more like, surprise, you're in a 40-year-long horror show. The government doctors didn't actually want to treat these men. Nope, they wanted to observe what happens when syphilis is left untreated. It's for science, they said, as they, they pretended to give treatment. The men were lied to, poked, prodded, and even told they had bad blood, which sounds more like a Taylor Swift song than a medical diagnosis. But hey, as long as they got those free hot meals, burial insurance, and a ride into town, right? Now, syphilis, if you don't know, is like the unwanted guess that just keeps getting worse. It starts off like a rash, then works its way up to total body destruction. So instead of providing the already available treatment, penicillin, the doctors watched these men deteriorate. 
you know, just chilling with notebooks like, oh, look, another brain eaten by bacteria. How fascinating. And did I mention this study lasted for 40 years? That's longer than most TV shows, except unlike Friends, no one here got any happy endings. It wasn't until 1972, yes, 1972, when a whistleblower finally said, hey, maybe letting people suffer and die without telling them isn't cool. No kidding. The fallout was predictably a mess. Lawsuits, apologies, and even a sorry are bad from President Bill Clinton in 1997. But an apology doesn't exactly bring back the years of suffering, does it? The Tuskegee syphilis study serves as a grim reminder that sometimes when science asks, what could go wrong? The answer is literally everything. All right, now let's teleport to the swinging 60s in America, home of rock and roll, bell bottoms, and a bunch of psychologists playing what if with the human soul. And speaking of messed up what ifs, let me introduce you to the Milgram experiment, where the question wasn't if people would hurt others under orders, but how far they'd go. Spoiler, it's disturbingly far. Enter Yale University in 1961, where psychologist Stanley Milgram had this wild idea. What happens if you tell a regular Joe to electrocute someone for getting a quiz question wrong? Because apparently, asking nicely wasn't edgy enough for Milgram. Picture this. You walk into a lab, and there's this guy in a lab coat, looking all official like he's curing cancer or something, and he tells you, hey, would you mind shocking this other guy whenever he messes up? It's for science. Trust me. And people... Oh, they trusted. They'd sit there, pressing buttons, listening to screams coming from the next room. Now, those screams were fake, the shocks weren't real, but the reactions? Absolutely legit. Every zap, every please I have a heart condition, plea was met with a casual, the experiment requires that you continue. And like sheep to the slaughter, they did. People went from 15 volts, barely a tickle, to 450 volts, which is less ouch and more congratulations, you've just won a trip to the ICU. And the catch? The guy getting shocked wasn't even there. It was all staged. But the participants didn't know that. They just kept turning the dial like they were adjusting the volume on a bad radio station. When the person on the other side screamed and then went silent, you'd think someone might have hesitated, right? Nope. Most kept going, proving that when a guy in a white coat tells you to do something, even if it's electrocuting a stranger, well, you do it. This wasn't some isolated fluke either. Over 60% of participants went all the way to the maximum voltage. Like, oh, he's not screaming anymore. Must be a great time to ramp it up. Milgram basically revealed that with the right authority figure, your sweet grandma could turn into Emperor Palpatine. Milgram's findings were an uncomfortable truth bomb. Apparently, it doesn't take much to turn us into obedient little shock-happy robots. Just add a clipboard, a calm voice, and the magic words... It's essential for the experiment. So, next time someone tells you to take orders, just remember, you're one lab coat away from becoming Darth Vader. Meet MKUltra, a CIA project so secretive and shady it makes every conspiracy theory look like a Sunday picnic. Imagine a government agency with way too much power, zero oversight, and an unhealthy obsession with mind control. Sounds fun, right? Oh, you have no idea. Picture this. It's the 1950s, and America is terrified of communist spies and apparently mind readers. So the CIA decided it was time to get creative, like experiment on your own citizens kind of creative. They called it MK Ultra, but they might as well have called it How to Ruin a Bunch of Lives for Science. Here's the basic plot. The CIA, with its shiny badges and dark sunglasses, decided to test if they could control people's minds using drugs, hypnosis, and wait for it. LSD. Because what better way to get information out of people than by making them trip harder than a 60s rock band? They secretly dosed unwitting participants, often without their consent, including soldiers, prisoners, and everyday folks just trying to enjoy their morning coffee. You could be chilling at a party, and next thing you know, you're seeing pink elephants because Agent Bob thought you'd make a great test subject. Doctors and scientists went all in with the experiments, pushing people's sanity to the breaking point. They even tried sensory deprivation tanks, electroshock therapy, and good old-fashioned psychological torture. What's that? You're losing your mind? Perfect. We're getting results. One notable volunteer was Ken Kesey, the guy who wrote One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. He was given LSD by the CIA, and let's just say it sparked some creative inspiration and a lifelong disdain for authority figures. But it gets worse. 
They also experimented on marginalized groups, prisoners, drug addicts, and the mentally ill, people who couldn't exactly say, hey, can I opt out of this nightmare, please? Oh, and did I mention that all of this was funded by your friendly neighborhood government? Yep, taxpayer dollars hard at work, like forget roads and schools were buying hallucinogens for mind control projects. And let's not forget the infamous case of Frank Olson, a CIA scientist who got secretly dosed with LSD, started freaking out, and then conveniently fell out of a hotel window. The official story was suicide, but with MK Ultra involved, it was more like, oops, we accidentally yeeted our guy off a building. Um, MKUltra wasn't just a bad idea. It was a catastrophic failure on every moral, ethical, and legal level. The whole operation got shut down in the 70s when the public found out and collectively went, wait, you did what? And of course, the CIA tried to destroy the evidence like a kid deleting his browser history. But some documents survived, giving us a peek into just how far the rabbit hole went. And trust me, it was wonderland on steroids. So, if you ever feel like you can't trust the government, well... MKUltra is the reason why. Because nothing says we've got your back like frying your brain in the name of national security. As we wrap up this wild ride through the shadows of psychology and government conspiracies, let's take a moment to reflect on our own choices. Will we blindly follow orders, or will we dare to ask questions and challenge the status quo? The power is in our hands, and it's up to us to ensure that history doesn't repeat itself. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Nerds Club. If you enjoyed this mind-bending journey, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next adventure into the weird and wonderful world of psychology and beyond. Until next time, keep questioning everything, and remember, sometimes knowledge really is power. Stay curious. 